My name is Honorable Ada Uchiebu from Anambra State. I was a PDP National Woman Leader Aspirant in 2012 and in 2013. I am now a member of APC. I was one of the ladies Panika already spoke about in 2013 August, where he spoke about three Igbo women in whom he has allegedly had intimacy with. The first person he mentioned was Ambassador Bianca Ujumibu, Ujuku, I, Honorable Adobe Uchebu, and another lady, Chioma Anaso. As at that time, I didn't feel the need to talk about this because I knew it was a drug stalking. I was calm because I felt it would all go away and he's a man not to be taken serious. I am talking now because I can see he is now becoming like an, an oncoming um, trailer who has lost control. And he's a danger to Nigeria, he's a danger to his family, he's a danger to himself. And the sooner Nigerians stop listening to him, the better for us. The reason why I'm speaking now is because Fanny Kaode has turned himself into an enemy of the Nigerian state. The Fanny Kaode that I know is a man of unstable character. This is a man whom I knew as a boss in 2002, 2003, 2004, 2006. The funny Kaode that I know is a very serial and serious pedophile. He has no scruples in sleeping with a woman of 15, 16, 17. I remember when we were working as um, SA to the president, as at that time of us in on media, he would always go to Sheraton at night to pick girls that wear all these house uh, dresses, buka, and he always picked the ones that were of very young age. And I always wondered, why is Oga behaving like this? I remember also in 2005, 2006, while we were living with Madame Jumo Kinjide, and um, she was then the SA to Obasanjo on Abuja matters. And then the house girl to Akino Shutoku used to come and visit Fanny and she was no more than 16, 17 years. Unfortunately, she got pregnant for him, and then he denied the pregnancy. This is a man who must smoke weed. This is a man who must take a large or maybe a quantity of cocaine in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, in the office. And when I talk about it, he tells me this is what keeps him sane. This is a man I know that has a long and long track record of domestic violence. This is a man that has no scruples in hitting a woman. He has hit me before. He has hit a many, many number of girls whom I have seen him with. This is a man that can just come out of his car and start fighting on the road. This is a man I know who has a very unique and unfortunate sexual experience. There was an instance when I flew in from Abuja, from Lagos to Abuja, to attend a meeting with um, Chief Fanika Alde, and I walked into his hotel room in Brutia, in, uh, in Asukoro. And there he was fighting with three girls in his hotel room. He even had to call the police. By the end of the day, he decided not to because he knew his name was at stake. The girls were raving mad. They accused him of certain sort of things. They accused him that he wanted to film them have, making love to him. They accused him that he, he wanted them to make love to themselves. They accused him of so many things, and I was deeply ashamed of my boss at that time. I have seen a situation where Femi Fanikade would come down from his taxi or from his car and physically fight taxi drivers, physically fight hawkers on the street, physically fight people. I have also had a first-hand knowledge of his beatings. He had one, more than one occasion given me a slap here and there because he said I'm always advising him too much. I know of certain that he beats his wife. I know of certain that this is a man that loves his children, especially his daughters, to, to the extent that I suspect would have led him to have sexual relations with them. Because at that time, he was also agitated about his children. He was always saying he never wanted his children to have a boyfriend. He can't just imagine his girls having boyfriends and husbands. And I think if that behavior had not been checked then, it could lead to a full-blown incest. Whenever I come into the office in the mornings, Chief Anika is always bent over with a plate of white substances, which I suspected to be cocaine. And at, he's always smoking that as soon as a, a guy comes in. And um, Chifanika Ade never lets us to know who this guy is. He never lets us to talk to him or even know his name. But the guy is tall, dark, and he would always come drop a package for Chifanika Ade and get some money and leave. And then Chifanika Ade unwraps it, smokes it, and then he becomes violent. He starts shouting at everybody in the office. He starts beating everybody. Then he says he can only take that each time he wants to go for an interview, each time he wants to speak on behalf of the president as at that time, and this is the only thing that gets him high.
Those were his words. And I would always complain and say, you have a bright future. Why don't you stop it? This is not right. You're not teaching we that are around you a good behavior. And he would always threaten me. Even right now, he knows my parents' house. He would always threaten that if I ever talk about him in this kind of terms, he was going to get me or any member of my family. Chief Anikade always talks about his experiences in Ghana. As at that time, I hadn't met him because we met in 2002. He told me how disappointed his father was about his drug habit and how his father shipped him over to Ghana to get um, reprieve in a rehab where he met his current wife, Regina. He told me how he couldn't complete the rehabilitation when his father died because at, at that time he thought it was okay. And then after a few years he started it and that was when I met him. And I used to encourage him, why don't you go back to the rehab? And he says, no, he wouldn't want to go there because he's after his name. We want people to say he's gone back to such uh, dirty parts of life. Each time he has um, epilepsy seizure, he would always beg for us to keep it quiet, that he doesn't want people to know that it has always been part of him ever since he went to Ghana. I believe that silence is not the best thing to do at this time, at the time Nigerians are clamoring for change. And then one man stands in, the, in, the, in front of Nigerians and says, no, this is time for me to speak up because Fanny Kaldi was just purposely brought into this campaign by the PDP just to deflect the minds and hearts of Nigerians from the real issue of change agitation. He has been brought by the PDP just to be a court jester, to make Nigerians laugh, and then they do the rigging. And that is why I'm speaking, because right now, Fanny Kaode is an enemy to Nigeria. He's an enemy to the Igbos especially, because if the president of this nation and PDP could make a character as Fanny Kaode, director of media and publicity, a man who said he had slept with our revered leader, his wife, Yanka, then I think Igbo should not give one vote to the PDP. And if any Igbo should do that, then that means they are spitting at the grave of our revered leader, Chief Odumi Gojuku. We Igbos are known to protect our wives. And for the fact that Chief Odumi is with us in spirit and a character as Fanny Kaode spoke ill of his wife, that should make Igbo say no to PDP and embrace change. While working for Chief Fanny Kaode, I have seen him have a lot of, uh, carry a lot of cash in, um, but from briefcases, a lot of, in these kind of um, boxes, and he will give it to any of his aides to carry to the airport, even when he's traveling abroad. Even here in Nigeria, he takes a lot of cash to the bank to put in his account. So I believe that has formed part of what is the remaining two count charges at the court, which I believe the prosecution has enough to nail him this time around. Chief Fanny Kaode is merely in PDP to save his neck. He doesn't want to go to jail. And above all, he, I believe, is working for PDP because of what he can get now. The Fanny Kaode, I know, is a man who lives a very luxurious life, who can spend large sums of money in a day. There is, he doesn't have this. He is prone to financial recklessness. He's prone to financial misappropriation. And he can only get that under the cover of PDP. And I have to speak now because he has constituted himself into a nuisance. Instead of him to do the work he's supposed to do, as in selling the bad product, who is, which is PDP and Jonathan, he's delving into personal matters of our esteemed leaders in APC. And that is why I'm speaking now, so that Nigerians would not take him serious any longer. He has a long history of illegal drug abuse. He has a long history of repressed sexual behavior. He has a long history of sexual pedophility and all that. And that is my submission as someone who was close to him at that time. I am Honorable Ada Uchebo, and I am not coerced to say this. I have said this in the interest and love that I have for Nigeria. Thank you very much.